Hello, my name is Jack J. Murphy, FDIC Advisory Board Member and Fire Engineering Contributing Editor. Today I'm going to talk about tips on vertical challenge in high-rise buildings. Across many metro areas, we are now dealing with super and mega tall high-rise buildings being erected. We are reaching out to codes and standards to give us definitions on what's a super tall building, what's a mega tall building. A super tall building is a building that's 980 feet, and a mega tall building is one that goes above 1,980 feet. The definitions play a key role, particularly for us, to develop fire ground tactics that will change somewhat from the foundation we have for high rise buildings, and at that end, we're dealing with 75 feet and above. The other thing, too, is how do we tame these fire environment? I encourage fire companies to go out as these buildings are under construction all right, and occupy. So here's an example of a 1200 story residential building that I toured in, in New York City. Uh, the building uh, is all poured concrete. They had some proactive things in there that are above the fire code. One of the things, they ran a fire alarm panel, active fire alarm panel, up the rises in the stairwell. They had speakers that were active. If they had an event in the building, they would make an announcement. The, this fire alarm panel, not required yet, rang locally. If there was a fire or something, they would call 911. Another thing they have, because we deal with these portable stairs uh, that, that are very narrow for us to get up at equipment, about 20 feet away from the portable scaffolding stair, they had a, a hole cut out in the floor. And all they did was take, just take the tip of the ladder, a straight ladder. They had that in the hole. And what it was is about three feet wide. And they had extenders on it too. So if one story was 10, 10 stories high, 10 feet high, the next one was 20, they could extend that up. So this gave us a good avenue to access uh, in these buildings too. Again, proactive on this side. I like to see a lot of these things with construction. In an occupied building, 1,400, square, 1400 feet in the air, 85 by 85, a very small footprint in an apartment building. And this apartment building is what I call a pencil building. What they had here at the bottom was mixed occupancies with real estate and that, but the apartments ran from the 20, 21 to 90th floor. And when you go into these buildings, they have scissor staircases. There's a challenge with those too. But in one staircase, we went in the stairs from 17th to the 18th floor. You're usually going to find one landing in the loop. This had four, so now you've got to consider another apartment pack. The other thing on the floors too, the, the corridors are only 40 feet long. So if you're doing a staging floor below, what do you do there to stage your full companies and everything to get ready to relieve the people above? They also had a private corridor. There was a public corridor and a private one. And I said to one chief, what do you do here if, if someone calls a May Day and they're down in, in the corridor? Which one they're in? And the private corridor is only for people to deliver packages to the door. And this, this was the only one. They had one door that went to the apartment, totally secured. The individual lead the package there. The other thing, too, I, my concern was that, what if the elevators recall on a smoke detector? How, how does anybody know this individual is in this private corridor? So these are some of the things you look at when you go into these buildings. And one other thing that stood out, stood out to me, in a lot of these buildings, we have uh, rubber chutes. And they usually land, they end up in the basement or at the street level. This one happened to end on the 21st floor. It's sprinkled and everything, but my concern here was that the compactor is sprinkled. Now I have to extract this product out. What if there's incompatibilities? And years ago, we dealt with this with mattress fires. They used to take them out, put them, go them down the stairs, and sometimes they would ignite. We're going back to this again. Once they just take that out and put it into the elevator, what if this incompatible product lights up? So those are some of the concerns that you should look at. Your fire company should get in there and constantly take these buildings apart. The other thing I saw there were three fire zones for the connections, low rise, mid rise, and high rise. They gave each floors like one to 30, and they also gave the height that it was going to. The concern for the pump operator at that threshold where one zone goes to the other, what do, what do I pump into first? So if the fire is at 31, I would activate the sprinklers, that'd be the second zone, and I would tap into the first zone for the stamp pipes. So those things, once you get out there, you gather building intelligence, this becomes your forte. Be safe out there. Thank you.